Let's shift into what is ransomware. What is what? Ransomware. It's a word that we can't stop saying because it's always happening. At this point, it's almost all roads lead to ransomware. It's one of the oldest crimes. It's extortion. Over time, adversaries realize there's only so much value in you know ransoming some person's photos off their computers. Now, actors are working together in groups to take down large corporations. If they have whatever revenue they is, right, 1.2 billion, 3 billion, then they can afford to pay a few million in ransom. We really started to think that this is the future. This is where cybercrime is going. I was still at home. I was making my coffee. You expect your morning to be a time to prepare, to get ready. But when your phone starts pinging and pinging and pinging, you know something's really bad. On this particular day, just woke up and I got a, another ransomware incident. When I saw the screen, the, the first thing I thought was, well, shit. it felt like a, a slow motion train wreck. And you're watching it unfold. It's, it starts here. And then all of a sudden, accounting is locked out and then the robotics team is locked out. Production is completely offline. People are wondering, did we change passwords? And of course we didn't. They did. You either need to immediately start relying on things like backups and figuring out how you're gonna recover, or you have to start the negotiation with the ransomware operators because you don't have much recourse at that point. We were given this ticking time bomb. We were told we needed to sit on it. You really have to decide, are we going to do the hard thing? You take everything offline. You rebuild it from scratch, you work with your ops team, you calculate your losses, and you just do the right thing. Or are we going to pay up? Everybody can say, you know, don't pay the ransom, but in a practical sense, some organizations don't have a choice. It's a choice between paying a ransom or becoming not a viable company anymore. This was far too sophisticated, and we knew we didn't have time. They were now in negotiations with the business side of the cartel. And this is what really opened my eyes to seeing how the cartel actually views themselves, right? They see it like they're performing a service. It looked like a business meeting. It looked like they were sitting there discussing contracts. Even the client didn't seem angry. That's the thing that boggled my mind. They were completely fine with paying the ransom, 100%. These came into existence or kind of coalesced as a group from the security perspective in 2019. They were looking for lots of money. Maze was one of the first ransomwares to make a very simple change. Rather than just locking up data, they exfiltrated it. Exfiltration is a fancy, stupid security word for take data out of a network. What we typically see now with ransomware is double extortion ransomware. So they not only want you to pay to get your stuff unencrypted, they also want you to pay so it doesn't get posted on the internet. Phishing is a common technique that we see. They'll do things like send emails saying, hey, there's an issue with your account. Click here to log in. And what you're clicking on is something that's owned by the bad guys. And then they're capturing those credentials. We're all going to click on stuff. Shit happens. So they now have access to all the systems and they're going to spread as much as they can and destroy as much as they can. Cobalt Strike is the malicious software they use to maintain control. They'll have one or two uh, Cobalt Strike endpoints and then they'll issue commands to those and they will serve as the mechanism that they communicate with to drive everything else that happens in the network. If the adversary was able to get, say, domain admin, that's keys to the kingdom. They could really do anything. A lot of them are also big game hunters. They're going into massive networks where you can hide very easily. They all know that you're more likely to pay the ransom by having that data. And they, so they leak small amounts of it on the dark web. They will then detonate the ransomware. Dear admin, your files have been encrypted by Maze Ransomware. Was there something we could have seen? What if we paid attention to this? What if we'd noticed it sooner? Could there have been something we'd added to our network to give us an earlier flag than what we already had? So you paid the ransom? Uh, I'm not going to say that. What it really boils down to is ransomware exists because people pay the ransom, right? 
because it works. A lot of people, when they think of the threat actors, they think of the dude who plays World of Warcraft and he lives in his grandmother's basement and he pounds a code red Mountain Dew and Doritos. It couldn't be farther from the truth now. I mean, they look like you. They look like me. They look like anybody else out there. These people have families. They have normal social lives. All they're doing is trying to make a living. In an environment where there's not a lot of lucrative opportunities, it can be very appealing for a lot of people. When we're talking about threat actors, we're talking about big criminal organizations, right? So when you think of it, you should think more in terms of the Yakuza or South American drug cartels. In the cybercrime world, your reputation is everything. They absolutely want to talk to the press. They want to talk about who they compromised and how much money they've made off of them. Maze was used across every industry. You know, it was in healthcare, it was in manufacturing, education, government. Any one of those things, they play a role in somebody's life. If you are an organization that potentially has some risks or some exposures, these guys are going to find you. Talos is a very interesting group that does everything in their power to protect Cisco's customers and the internet at large. We are a group of about 400 threat hunters that essentially spend every day attempting to stop the bad guys. We're made up of threat hunters, reverse engineers, malware analysts, and experts in basically every type of technology you can imagine. We can't prevent everything, but what we can do is figure out something is in the environment faster and respond to it appropriately, and that'll keep us from having, you know, the $9 million ransomware payout. The customer is running Cisco Secure Endpoint in audit mode, which means that they're testing it, they're evaluating it, but they're not actually blocking anything on it. We have certain things that our products look for. They deliver alerts, but they're not always contextual. But we always tell them, we're like, hey, we saw this on your network, do with it what you will. So they were alerted to some anomalous behavior. They did some digging on their side and they ended up contacting our IR services. We identified some base 64 encoded PowerShell activity that the adversary had likely used for initial access and to deploy their command and control payload. Within a matter of 15 minutes, there were multiple red dots appearing on our screen. And we knew there was some trouble. I mean, we couldn't take this lightly anymore. A part of the network that was attempted to be encrypted but it failed for whatever reason. The ransomware didn't detonate properly or something. We had no idea when they were going to make the next attempt. It could be days, it could be minutes. The pressure was on. The customer fit the vertical, they fit the economic profile. We were able to get the, the binary out for the ransomware and we took a look at it and we're like, yeah, this, is, this looks like it's maze. At that point, we were like scrambling because they had a long list of logs that they needed, endpoint logs, config logs, any config changes in the network, and that's a huge amount of data. So that's when you start to get excited, right? And so around midday, you start to kind of see it all come together. The way that they're doing stuff, it, it really does look like maze. And then we started to look through, and the time codes kept getting closer and closer and closer to the day, and then we finally looked through some of the logs, and like, like this group of commands right here was executed three minutes ago. And we're like, this person is still here. It's terrifying. The panic levels are high. The sense of urgency is so high because you know there is an intruder who is seeing your every move and trying to outdo you. We had done drills together. We helped them write their incident response plan. We tested that incident response plan. So there was a lot of trust and a great relationship. So they knew when they saw us calling that they better pick up the phone. So we told them, like, hey, we think this actor is still active in your network. They've just moved somewhere else. Since we, we have a high confidence that this is Maze, if you don't do something, then they potentially will encrypt your entire network. The most stressful days are the days when you find out something has happened and the information is no place close to complete yet. We were able to go to the customer and go, okay, this is, this is what we saw. This is what's gonna happen next. Here is what we do to prevent that. It's not lost on us that when we're doing our best work, it's because somebody else is having the worst day of their career. The minute we told them what to do, there was not a lot of debate going on internally if they should take that control, reset passwords, push this policy out. They just did it because they were worried the risk was so high that if they wouldn't have implemented that control and ransomware would have been detonated, that's a game changer. We knew what to do. It was act now and apologize later. And that's what we did. Within hours, we were able to 
fully contain, that's huge. Then I think by that next morning, have them fully eradicated. Now, what we often see with ransomware actors is they'll put back doors in place. They stopped all activity, but they still took data. So they weren't able to execute the ransomware part of it and, and encrypt everything, but they still exfiltrated the data. So that's the, the big thing for the double extortion, right? You always have a backup again. Between you know, the proactive work on my team and then the, the, the rapid actions by the customer working on those recommendations, we were able to prevent that intrusion from becoming an encryption incident and saving that customer. With the work we do, like winning isn't in the equation. Our best day, we tie. We tie the bad guys. Nobody wins. They don't win. What's in it for us is making the internet a safer place for everybody. We're there for our customers on their worst career day, but then we also guide them to be resilient when your vulnerability or that gap is exposed. It's a known risk. You've identified it, but you have confidence in your organization. People, process, and technology, all three of those intertwine together as it relates to resilience. The majority of us go about our daily lives. We have everything connected to us. We have everything at our fingertips in a moment's notice. And there is an invisible war that's almost being waged in the background that many people are not aware of. Cybersecurity, I think, is always going to be there because there are always going to be people who are willing to commit crimes. Maze made the amount of money that they wanted to make. And they figured if they made any more, they risked getting caught.